Dear friends, this Shabbat, we begin reading the new book of Shemos, the book of Exodus. And as the secular year is closing up and people are finalizing their year, many of our dear friends in Montreal have left and gone on vacation. The schools are closed. They've wound down or are winding down and giving themselves a chance to recharge. Yet at the same time, we're dealing with a lot of fear going around about the Omicron, the latest variant that's so contagious, that's con- spreading so fast, a lot of fear, panic. I hear from many people talking to them on the phone or in general, uh, a, a fear that I haven't heard since almost the beginning of the pandemic, as if we haven't moved forward in any way. So I want to share with you something from this week's Torah portion to help strengthen ourselves. Pharaoh is wanting to not only enslave the Jewish people, but to make our lives so miserable that we will buckle, we will fall. We will break. We will never be able to stand up as individuals, definitely not as a group, and be any threat to him. And one of the things that he did was that he called in the Jewish midwives who were led by Yocheved and Miriam, Shifra and Pua were their names that the Torah uses. The people used to help all the Jewish women give birth. And we know that there were many births going on. There was no family planning. There was no concern about how the sizes of the family. They all knew that to propagate the world is our mission, bring in beautiful children who will be the future. It's interesting, actually, when we talk about what's going on with the COVID, they're always divided by countries who are young and countries who are old. When they talk about Canada, they talk about older countries. They talk about many other countries in the world. Israel, thank God, amongst them. Younger countries. It's unfortunate that we are an older country. There are not enough young people being born. And if not for immigration, we'd be a very old country. And our job is, as the Jewish women knew then, to propagate the world, bring children into the world. These are the greatest gifts that we can bring to the world and that God gives us the ability to have children. We become godlike when we have children. And Pharaoh said, when you give birth to a boy, throw him in the Nile, kill him, get rid of him. But these Jewish midwives, their life was all about bringing life. And no matter what the decree was, and for the most powerful person who had every means to follow through on his order and his threats. And yet the Torah tells us that they didn't listen to Pharaoh at all. And they advised the Jewish women how to give birth to their children and make sure to hide them or to bring them up in a way that the Egyptians will not find them. And as the Torah tells us, they gave life to the children. They gave a new, renewed vigor to the women. They said, we're not going to break We are not going to stop having families. Actually, we are told that Amram, who is the leader of the Jews, the husband of Yocheved, divorced or separated from his wife, he said, if we can't have boys because they'll be killed, why should we be married and have any children? And his little daughter Miriam, who was Pua, one of the midwives said, Father, you are worse than Pharaoh. He at least allows a Jewish girl to exist. You will not even allow Jewish girls because... You're not going to be married and have children. The power of giving life. This is giving new life to children. What about those of us who are alive? It's so sad for me to see the faces of people that their mental health is challenged, that they feel that they're buckling under this constant press conferences that are going on, which sometimes they say is in the name of information, but more casts more fear than information and creates hysteria more than guidance. We have to take a page from the Torah. Yes, 
those who have to be careful, be careful. Those who have to be more careful, be more careful. And everyone should be careful to keep everyone safe. But don't allow panic. Don't allow hysteria. Don't allow ourselves to buckle. But chayena, we're going to keep ourselves alive. We're going to keep ourselves connected. We're going to keep ourselves together. We are not going to fall apart. Because if we would fall apart, we would not be here today to tell the story. And we never fell apart. And today we will not either fall apart. We won't allow families to feel disconnected from their own children and grandchildren. We will not allow the feeling of despair to take place amongst the Jews. And we, I mean you and I, every one of us here, even when we're following the rules, we're going to, in spirit, keep Batchayena alive with f- vigor, with spirit, with drive, with happiness, with joy. Share it across any medium. Show it to others. Make it happen for yourself and those around you. And then we will make through this, but we'll make through it stronger. So we love you all. May God bless you. Shabbat Shalom, candlelighting time in Montreal, 3.57 p.m.